Now we know that the formula for calculating GPE is mass times gravity times height. Okay? You're not going to have to memorize the formula. They'll be given to you. What you do have to know that is a very part of the first step of DOFUS are the units. Okay? So I've listed your first set of units here at the bottom. All right? When we use mass for any problem, the units that we will use for mass will be kilograms. Gravity will be represented by meters over seconds squared. Now, that square doesn't mean you're doing any math and squaring anything. That square is just part of the units. That's not telling you to do any math, okay? It's just the label. Height will be measured in meters. And we've already talked about the J for joules. All types of energy will be measured in joules, so that means GPE, the unit for it, is joules, okay? So this is all on the Schoology lesson, all right? Now we need to talk about how we're going to go about these calculations. We are always going to use doofus, okay? Now I want you to take out those that doofus notes, and I want you filling this in. Don't write this on notebook paper. Write it in your doofus notes, which will be number 59 in your binders. So doofus is going to be how we will solve all linear equations with a missing variable. Now that might sound like another language to some of you, which is why we're going to use doofus. Okay? So that you don't get caught up in, I don't know how to do this math. You just have to know how to use the problem-solving format, okay? So let's start with D, okay? Or actually, let's review what I already said to you and how DOFUS works. So all problems for DOFUS will be worth five points. You're going to get one point for every step in DOFUS. So D is worth a point, U is worth a point, so on and so forth. That means correct answers are only worth one point since that's step F, okay? That means if you turn in a problem and you've done all the steps correct and your final answer is wrong, you had a snafu when you were typing it into your calculator, or you didn't know how to type it into your calculator and it popped out the wrong answer, you will still get an 80% if you do the four previous steps correctly. Okay? All right. Step D is for data. What's data a fancy word for? Numbers. Because math problems are all about the numbers. And a lot of your math problems will be word problems. And for some reason with students, that's like kryptonite to Superman, word problems. You don't have to worry about that here if you're using do this. All right? So let's open this up and show you how we're going to do step D. Now I'm going to give you an example problem. Okay? I want you to write this at the very top of your doofus steps. Write this example problem. That way underneath every step will be one step showing you with the example problem. Once again, we are only going to focus on the numbers. So when I'm looking at this problem using Dufus, I'm only on the hunt for numbers. This is where knowing your units is vital. You have to know them in order to understand what the number is. So the first number I come to is 5M. If you know your units, What is that 5m equal to? It's the height. Now, this is a variable. This is a unit. Two very different things. If that confuses you, write out the word height. If it's just too many letters and you're getting caught up with what's a variable, what's a unit, 
write out the word for the variable. So height is equal to 5 meters, because we know meters is a measurement of height. Okay? The next number I come to is 16J. What does the J represent? Now here it would be GPE. Remember, joules are going to represent all types of energy. But the only type of energy that deals with height is GPE. So we can assign the variable GPE to 16 joules. Okay? What other variables did we say play a role in GPE? Because I've run out of numbers, but I know there's not just two variables for GPE. What else am I missing? Gravity. Does gravity need to be written up here in the problem? No, it's a constant. So gravity will always be the same. Okay? And this will be a constant that will be given to you. You don't have to memorize it. Okay? It'll be given to you. All right? So now, am I done? No. No. What am I missing still? <coughs> mass. Do I know mass? No. So here I'm going to write a question mark. And what will the units for mass be? Kg. Okay? This right here is step D. Now, if you don't have them in the same order, like let's say you wrote gravity first, gravity equals 9.8 meters over second squared, that's fine. But you can't mix them up. You can't write GPE equals 5 meters. No, it doesn't. Meters is not a measurement of energy. Do you understand? Don't leave out gravity. GPE is the only calculation where you're going to write gravity for. <coughs> Don't forget to write it because it will not be included up here in the problem because it's a constant. Again, only have to worry about that for GPE problems, which is what we're starting with. Okay? So is everybody clear about how to do step D for doofus? Okay. Step U. Step U is for the units. Okay? Now, even though this is written as the second step, it needs to be something you really do at the end. Because every single number you write, not just the ones you wrote in step D, Every time you write a number on your paper, it has to have units. Remember the example I gave you at the beginning of this class, and we talked about this before. If I walk in and I say, hey guys, this morning I had three. Exactly. Three what? You don't know what I'm talking about if I throw out a naked number to you. Just like I don't know what you're talking about. Brandon, close your laptop, please. Close your iPad. I don't know what you're talking about if you write a number on your paper and it has no label. <clears throat> Bless you. So we do not want to ever, ever, ever turn in a paper with naked numbers. Every single time you write a number, it needs to have its unit label. Or I will take a point off for units. And the best you can get on that problem is an 80%. I will say that this is where the majority of students lose their points. Because they do not pay attention to detail and make sure that every number has a unit. Okay? So don't get caught with that. Especially on a quiz or a test. Okay? So again, here we just have these numbers, but we're going to have a lot more numbers in our problem by the end of the problem. All right? The next, F is for formula. The formula is your set of math directions for how to solve the problem. The formula is huge for doing the math correctly, and you have to choose the correct formula. And you're going to make that choice based on the variables that you wrote in step D for doofus. So our variables that we had written were an H and a GPE. 
even if you didn't know gravity and mass at the time, let's take a look at what you're going to have on a test. Okay? So an example of what I'm talking about. Okay? And the reason why this is so important. Because I will give you the formulas. But you're going to have to find these formulas and decide which one is most appropriate. So here's an example of an old test. Look at the top of this test. You're given the constant for gravity, but you're also given a whole bunch of formulas. And you have to choose which one to use with what problem. Again, you're looking for these letters to match up with what you wrote in, in step D, the first step, okay? So for ours, the only one that has a GPE or an H in it is this formula right here. So that's what I would choose and write with my problem. You need to write this for every single problem, even if all we're doing so far is GPE, just to get in the habit of doing that step. This is also a step that I find that many, many students skip. Don't skip this step. It's very important because once more, that formula is your set of math directions. So on my paper for this problem, I would write GPE equals M times G times H. Okay, so that should be written under F on your paper in your example notes. The next step is very tricky, so you need to focus here. This will only be used in GPE problems, this step, okay? Because the other problems you'll just be straight solving for whatever variable is all by itself. Now, right now, what is this problem solving for? It's solving for GPE. Excellent, Kelby. And Kelby knew that because GPE is all by itself on one side of the equal. Doesn't matter which side. If this was written like this, it still means the same thing, and it's still solving <coughs> for GPE. Because GPE is the only variable that's by itself on one side of the equal. Do we need to find GPE in this example problem? No, I already know that it's 16 joules, don't I? So I need to arrange this equation to solve for what is missing. Now, there's a lot of technical math involved in rearranging equations, but I'm not here to teach you the math because this is science class and you're not all at the same math level. So I'm going to show you a trick for rearranging the equation. And that trick is going to use something called the power triangle. Okay? So A is for arranged. And again, you're only going to have to do this with GPE problems that are not solving for GPE. So here, what are we solving for? Mass. So we need to arrange the GPE equation, okay, to solve for mass because we're missing its mass, right? So here's how we're gonna do that. You're gonna take your original equation that you chose in step F, and you're gonna rearrange it so the missing variable that you're trying to find is all by itself on one side of the equal sign, okay? Now, what I want you to do is I want you to draw an arrow in step A right now, and then on the back of your paper, I want you to write how to use a power triangle. Now, this first step is really hard, so pay attention. The first step to using a power triangle, you have to draw a triangle. I know, that's tough. 
So draw one side, then one side, then one side. And then you have a triangle. So like, uh, really, you got it? All right. I know, it's a tough one. That's the oh, toughest man. part of this whole lesson. All right. Next thing you have to do is you need to break this triangle into the number of boxes for however many variables you have in the equation. How many different variables are in the GPE equation? <coughs> four, excellent. One, two, three, four. Only one of those variables can go on top. So we're only gonna draw one box for the top of our triangle. Then I need to divide the bottom part into however many boxes I have left, which would be three. So now I have four parts to my triangle for the four variables. The only variable that matters is the one that goes on top. The one that goes on top is the variable that's already all by itself in the original equation. What variable is already all by itself in the original formula? GPE. So GPE will always go on top of the power triangle for the GPE formula. Then you just put in the rest of the, the stuff wherever. I just put them in order because it's easy. The next thing that we have to do is read the power triangle. To read the triangle, you're going to cover up the variable that you want to solve for. And we established that here that is mass. So I'm going to cover that up. I've already used it. Now just read the equation. What's it say? Where's the GPE? On top. Of what? This needs to be on your paper for step A. Which is step arranged. So I would need to see that. This is now your set of math directions. Not this, because we couldn't use that for this problem. Sometimes it will be this. If you're solving for GPE, do you need to do step A? No. You won't always need to do step A. If the, what you're missing is GPE, step A is not necessary. It's already set up to solve for GPE. Okay? But here, this will be our set of math directions. In the other cases, the regular original formula will be the set of math directions. This tells you how to do the math to solve the problem. So now let's move on to step S. Does everybody understand how to use a power triangle? Morgan. I don't care how you get this. I don't need to see your power triangle. I just need to see this. I don't care how you get this. So if you know how to do that without a power triangle, fine, whatever it takes, okay? I don't care how you get this. I don't need to see how you got this. I just need to see this written on your paper. I don't need to see the power triangle. I don't need to see how you rearranged it. This is where you will get your point for step A. I don't need to see anything leading up to that to get that equation, okay? Just need to see the equation. All right, so that takes us to our last step, okay? Which is substitute and solve. So when you get to this point, let me show you what everything on your paper should look like so far to get your five points. This is what you should have. Oh, 
taking that step D and writing D. So this is what you should have all on your paper so far to get your points. The next step is to substitute, and then we solve. What we're going to substitute is all of this into this. So what did we say that m was equal to? Over here. Question mark, kg. Do you see how I substituted that in for m? What did we say that GPE was equal to? 16 J. And what did we say G was equal to? Do you see where I'm just putting it in? 9.8 meters over second squared times, okay, there's your set of math directions, what? 5 meters, okay? So we didn't use this as our set of math directions for this problem. For some problems, you will. And then you would just take mass times gravity times height, and that would give you your answer. That's what you would set up down here, okay? But here is our set of math directions. Now, here's where you need to know something you learned in elementary school. It's very important. Order of operations. You may recall it as PEMDAS. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. You cannot just go plugging stuff into your calculator. It will not give you the correct answer. You are smarter than your calculator. The calculator just does what you tell it to do. If you tell it to do the wrong thing, it gives you the wrong answer. You have to know the math in order to operate the calculator correctly because it is not smarter than you. So let's review PEMDAS. What does the P in PEMDAS stand for? Do we need to worry about any parentheses here? What's the E stand for? Exponents. Is anything squared or cubed? No. This does not say to square or cube anything, does it? Let me remind you, this is your set of math directions, and I've already said three times, this is not telling you to do some math. It's a label. So does this say to square or cube or raise anything to an exponent? No. Do we have multiplying? Yes. yes. That means that I have to do this first. If I do not, I will not get the correct answer. So this problem needs to be done in steps. The first thing I need to do is multiply 9.8 times 5. If you plug that into your calculator, it should give you 49. <coughs> now, do I leave this naked? No. 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 So let's take a look at what the units would be. I have meters over second squared times a meter. What would that give me for units? What's a meter times a meter? <coughs> meter squared. And that goes over. So those are the units that need to go with the 49. Now, pay close attention, because I said this in my last class, and they did not <coughs> pay attention. If you were doing to solve for H, if you were doing mass times gravity on the bottom, that would be a kilogram times a meter over second squared. Can I simplify that? No. 
So that is what you would write for your unit. This can be simplified because there's the same unit in both. This cannot. Do we understand? Yes. So this is what you would write if you had a mass times gravity on the bottom, which you will when you're solving for height. Okay? All right. So am I done yet? No. So I've done my multiplying. That's done. What's next? Divide. For those of you who are really not quite strong in math, when you have a fraction, you divide, and I want you to write this down, the top number. Top goes into the calculator first by the bottom number. So when I'm plugging that into my calculator to get my answer, I am taking 16 divide 49 equals. That's going to spit out a really long answer. <coughs> do you think I want all that? No. I absolutely do not. We will always round, oops, we will always round, why didn't that come up? Well, ain't that some mess. We will always round only the final answer. And I want you to write this down. Do not round the other calculation you did. Don't round what you multiply. Leave that whole number there. The only thing you round is the final answer. To the hundredths place. Which means you will have two numbers to the right of the decimal. Okay? So let's do a quick rounding review. We did this when we figured out neutrons back in the chemistry unit. If I want to cut my number off here, the only number that matters is this one in the thousands place. I don't need to look at any of these other numbers. If that number is between 0 and 4, what does it tell me to do to this number? Okay. Leave it alone. If this number is between 5 and 9, what does it tell me to do to this number? Round it up one digit. So what is this answer really? waiting for something. No. What is our final unit? Thank you. And then put a box around it, please. Okay? So just as a reminder, this is everything you needed to have on your paper to get all five points for this problem. That is what I should see if you want all your points. Just to remind you, this is D. This is F. This is A. This is S. And note that every single number, no matter where it's written unit. on this paper, has 
a unit. That is how to use doofus to solve problems. Are we clear? Okay. What you need to do then is you need to go on to Schoology. Cut the video. Okay. Yeah. Thank you.